We're going to focus on China, Russia, and Brazil. I'm going to give you a, a short analysis of each market. I'm going to show you why there's growth in those markets, how to reach those markets, and how to prepare for those markets. So we're going to with China. Now, obviously China's massive, almost 2 billion people, but China has grown immensely. 12 years ago, they spent $13 billion on travel. All right, this year, well over $100 billion, and it continues to grow. Why is that? Because one, Chinese wealth. Number two, the restrictions on foreign travel. Up until 10 years ago, it was difficult for the Chinese to travel. Right now, the Chinese government has made it very easy for them to travel. And lastly, because of the appreciating currency. I started going to China 15 years ago, and as an American, it was very inexpensive. I could go to China, buy things, it was great. Now it's the other way around. <coughs> China's actually become expensive, so when the Chinese travel, it's actually inexpensive for them to come. You look at the charts, all right? Right now, China's the number one outbound market. When you look at into the Caribbean, they're not in the top 10. The next one is Russia. Obviously, the Russian market continues to grow. The amount of wealth in Russia is there, and they moved up to number five on the list. All right, and then obviously Brazil. Brazil is growing faster than anyone in South America. Um, again, up to over $20 billion spent. All right, so onto the Chinese market. We're gonna spend a little time talking about each, all right? If you look at the size, the Chinese middle class, all right, is actually larger than the entire population of the United States. Right? In 15 years, that's going to reach 800 million, twice the size of the United States. And these are people that are traveling. All right? The middle class, they're educated, they have money, and they want to go out and see the world. They're starting to see the world right now, and what we'd like to do is introduce them to the Caribbean and other markets. However, like the Russians, the Brazilians, and the Chinese, right? In order for them to go to the Caribbean, the Caribbean has to raise their awareness level. Right now, when any of these emerging markets look at where they're going to travel, they know what to expect within Asia, they know what to expect within Europe, they know America, but their awareness level of the Caribbean isn't there right now. So before they decide to go to the Caribbean, right, they, they need the awareness to be there. And that means that they're not going to go to St. Kitts, they're not going to go to Barbados, they're not going to go anywhere within the Caribbean until you raise top of mind awareness. And more on that in a few minutes. How do the Chinese travel? Okay, you know, number one is the leisure market. They want to go out and they want to see the world. They want to see anything they can when they travel. They don't necessarily focus on sun and sand or culture. They, they want to see anything. That's number one. Uh, but when they go, not only do they want to see something, but they want to spend money. They want to shop. So as a destination, you want to make sure that you can provide them with plenty of great shopping, mainly the luxury side. All right? Their travel peaks are seasonal, May, October, and December. Why May and October? Because they have two national holidays. Golden weeks are first week of May, first week of October, when the entire country takes off and they travel. So you want to make sure that you focus on those, desti those, those peaks. And lastly, the month of December, uh, they take time off as well. Up until a few years ago, the majority of their outbound travel was within Asia. Those days are over. Now they're out there seeing the world. And lastly, it's the young market. It's the youth that are also traveling. So what do they look for? They're looking for high quality when they travel. These folks have money, they want four and five star properties. They want something that's sophisticated. They also travel independently. Unlike the Russian market and other markets, you're not gonna see major groups and busloads of Chinese coming to destinations like the Caribbean. They look for something that's off the beaten track. Um, something that suits their personal interests, and again, I can't stress enough, the shopping market. Okay. What do these folks look for? How, how, how can you reach them? Obviously the internet. Right? The internet is uh, growing mighty, mighty fast in China. You know, you read stuff on the news that things are blocked. No. Um, between social media and the internet, that's where they are. 
So again, as a destination, if you have a website in Mandarin, whether it's a tourism board website, a government website, that's how you can reach them. How are they booking their long haul travel? A lot of it's done through the travel agencies in China. All right, and lastly, you know, the Chinese see travel as a form of self-expression. They want to go out, see the world, go back, and tell their friends that they've seen the world, that they've done something different, and then they can spread the news. So if they go to the British Virgin Islands, they travel around, they go to the baths, and they have this incredible experience, they go back, they tell their friends about it, and then, then their friends want to come back and visit. So the trickle-down effect is enormous within the Chinese market. So what can you do as a tourism board or as a hotel to be ready for the Chinese market? The Chinese are not going to travel unless they can come to your hotel and you have somebody that speaks Mandarin. The next thing that they look for is they have a certain breakfast every morning. Um, Chinese is the only culture where they have their, their kanji, their porridge for breakfast. Uh, it would be great if, you know, in America everybody had the same cereal for breakfast every morning. In China it's easy. They all have kanji. So, once your hotels have the people that speak the language, then you need to provide that certain breakfast for them. So you import the kanji. Next, they all drink tea, but they don't drink Lipton tea. They drink their Chinese teas. So you have to bring in the special Chinese teas and the hot pots and put those in the rooms. Now, when the Chinese travel, they don't travel with toothbrushes because they're used to staying in hotels in China that provide toothbrushes. So there's a number of amenities, and I just single out toothbrushes as an example, that you need to provide for the Chinese market. And then on your menus, you should provide some Chinese delicacies for them to eat as well at the other meals. Now, some people say, well, that's okay. We have Chinese restaurants in our islands. Well, the reality is the Chinese don't eat in Chinese restaurants when they travel. Um, it's just like when as an American, if we travel, um, we, we don't go eat at uh, McDonald's or Morton's when we go to Europe, we eat at the European restaurants. <clears throat> so just because you have a Chinese restaurant, is it going to help with the Chinese market? <laughs> Lastly, it's, it's not mandatory, but if you did have one Chinese television station and you could work with your cable operator, uh, that would be helpful as well. Not only do you need folks that speak Mandarin at the front desk, but you should have some audio guides in Mandarin. So if you're the Jamaica Tourism Board and you're taking people to Duns River Falls or any other attraction throughout the Caribbean, and I don't mean to point out any destination, i just use a few examples here, um, you should probably create audio guides for them. You don't necessarily need the guides that speak Mandarin, but if you have an audio guide, just like we have here, that would help. Um, keep moving on here. Visa policies. Now, most Caribbean countries are actually changing their visa policies now so that the Chinese can enter without a visa. My recommendation is actually this. Uh, knowing the market very well, if the Chinese are going to travel to the Caribbean, and there is a huge opportunity once you have the Chinese speakers and you're ready to go after that market, they are willing to go to the Caribbean. But the secret is this. Right now, more than 2 million Chinese are going to America every year. And if you look at Brand USA's efforts and what America is doing to bring more and more Chinese to America, um, China will be the number one inbound market into America within five years. Now, that's not me saying that, that's Brand USA saying that. When they come to America, they're going to New York, they're going to Orlando, they're going to the traditional markets. Then they could add something else on. If they want to add on sun and sand or a beach, you add on the Caribbean. So you would come over to America, you do your Chicago, Las Vegas, New York, and then you can add four days on at a Caribbean destination. So it's best to work with those inbound tour operators in America that are selling packages to the U.S. from China than to add on your destination. But again, until you're hotel ready and you have the concierge and the audio guides in Mandarin and the, the porridge, what have you, um, you need to wait. But again, work with the U.S. operators. Lastly, credit card acceptance issues. Um, how many people here accept China Merchant Bank and China Union pay cards? That's a problem as well. So the Chinese, they don't have American Express. Sorry for Eugenio if he's here. Um, where many Visa cards are American Express. 
It's mainly cash, China Union Pay, and China Merchant Bank. So the hotels need to work with their processor on the acceptance platform, and at the same time, the shops. So when they come in there and they bring an envelope full of Remibi or a China Union Pay card into the Louis Vuitton store, uh, somebody has to be able to accept that. So that's a little bit about what the Chinese accept or expect. Um, and I mentioned how to partner with the U.S. operators earlier. What else can you do to go after the Chinese market? You know, one, you need a website in Mandarin. And I was talking to, to somebody uh, earlier this week about the Chinese market, and she said, oh, we, we, we have a, a Chinese website for them. We had to translate it. Um, just translating your website usually doesn't do the trick. Um, our recommendation is to customize something small and simple just for the Chinese that tells them this is where we are, this is how you got here, these are our visa policies, these are our hotels that speak Mandarin, and these are the attractions that are ready for you. And of course this is our shopping. It also helps to have your website hosted in China. Uh, this way they can find it a lot easier than having it hosted elsewhere. Lastly, uh, in simplified Chinese. There's different languages within China, and uh, simplified is the most widely recognized. Um, social media, again, very important. Obviously, no Facebook in China. You know, I can't even get on Facebook when I'm over there. But uh, Weibo is their social media site, and it's three times the size of Facebook. Um, PR, obviously, it's important to every destination, every region. PR is a little different in China. Um, you, you can't really do the road shows and just go on and pitch stories. Um, fam trips, yes, but celebrities are more important. So bringing a Chinese celebrity, whether it's Yao Ming or a Chinese movie star, over to your destination, um, that gets picked up widely back in China. So that's the type of PR that you'd be looking for out of the Chinese market. Out of the Russian market, um, again, Russia's population is about 150 million. Unemployment rate is low, and wealth is high. Um, like the Chinese market, visas are an issue, but from what I understand, the majority of the Caribbean uh, has changed their policies and the Russians can visit there. Now, the Russians know the Caribbean, unlike China. You know, for years, they've been going to Cuba, and the Dominican Republic has done a great job with the Russian market. Um, those are the two biggest. But again, there's opportunity for others. What do they look for when they travel? Uh, Russians are, are very simple. They want a memorable experience, they want sun and sand, they want a shop, and they want their privacy. They also book late. Um, unlike other markets, you know, the Russian market is you know, three to four weeks out, if not even sooner than that. So if you're going after the Russian market and you know you have low season, shoulder season, you know, throw some deals out there to the Russians, and boom, they're in. Uh, they're adventurous. You know, they'll, they'll go hike Duns River Falls. They'll, they'll go do things. Uh, they love to drink. They love to eat. Um, but again, they love to spend money. And I think if you look at the emerging markets that we're talking about today, these are all destinations, outbound markets, that are going to bring in, you know, $5,000 plus per week uh, in a spend which I think if you compare that to the U.S., Canadian, and other markets, uh, those are pretty strong numbers, and it might be worth exploring the investment in these markets. Uh, the Russians, not only do they look for sun and sand, but the educational market. Uh, there's some well-educated Russians that want to go out and see the world, explore different cultures. Um, so that might be another market that if you want to showcase the culture of your islands, uh, that could be something else to look for. In terms of seasonality, they also have their special holidays when they travel uh, between late April, the Workers' Day in May, and then um, you know, November. So again, these are just some things to remember when you're planning your marketing for different markets. How do you reach them? Um, there's not that many tour companies that are selling outbound travel in Russia. So it's actually pretty simple. You know, you really look at a 20 dominant tour operators that are selling outbound travel out of Russia. So if the rep firm or the people that you're working with just focus on those, it's quite easy. Um, you could also look at an add-on with the U.S. Uh, it was just announced yesterday that TransAero, which is uh, 
um, a Russian carrier which flies to New York from Moscow uh, is now doing interline agreements with JetBlue. So that's something that you could look at for an add-on, however, just for an add-on, uh, because the Russians would still need a visa to come to America. Um, the charter growth is, is huge. If you look at how they're traveling to the DR, they're traveling to Vietnam, Thailand, and other destinations, uh, they're coming by charter, they're bringing two, 300 people on a plane, and they're taking over full hotels. So there is a big market for Russia. And again, if you look at where they're going right now, Vietnam, Thailand, DR, Cuba, Florida, Baltics as well. So you can take a look at where they're going, why they're going there, and create something similar in your destination. But how do you do it? It takes sending people to Russia that speak the language and um, meeting with those tour operators. But of course, you know, you need people at your hotels that speak the language. Another way to get folks that speak the language to your hotels, um, if you look at the hotel schools in China and Russia and other markets, um, there's plenty of people over there that are studying that speak language and speak their language, their language in English. Um, bring them over as interns uh, to your destination and um, it's an easy way to get uh, inexpensive labor that can also communicate with the potential guests at the same time. In terms of PR in, in the Russian market, it, it's all luxury and high-end magazines. For the travel trade, yes, they have their, their TTGs and their travel weeklies, which there's two or three of them. It's easy to work with those guys. But when it comes to consumer, they don't necessarily have the travel and leisures, the AFARs, the county nests. It's all luxury, high-end lifestyle magazines, um, and working with them and celebrities are also something to uh, explore. On to the Brazilian market. Uh, Brazil is probably an easier target than Russia and China for you because it's more accessible. It's much, much easier for the Brazilians to get over to the Caribbean. Um, now again, language, just like having people that speak Russian, Chinese, Anybody here people that speak Portuguese at their hotels? All right, so you have some Portuguese. So the Brazilian market, if you have Portuguese, you're, you're good to go there to start with. Uh, who are the Brazilians that are traveling? All right, they're much, much younger than other folks. You know, when you see the Chinese and the Russians, for the most part, they tend to be a little older. Um, but again, Brazil, half the population is, uh, is under 30. So the youth is, is quite strong. Now, when they travel, they want to have fun. These aren't the kind of people that are going to go sit in their room and uh, watch a movie and uh, play Scrabble. You know, they're going to get out and see the destination, and they're also going to spend money. Where are they going right now? Uh, numbers from Brazil into the U.S., you know, double-digit growth and continue to go up there. So right now it's U.S., Europe, and um, obviously Europe because of where they speak Portuguese and, and the different similar cultures. And uh, Latin American growth is also quite strong. Like China and Russia, expenditures are very high at $5,000 or more. Younger, well-educated. Also interesting is that being younger, a lot of the Brazilians have never left the country before. So they're all looking for their first trip. So you want to make sure that their first trip is to the Caribbean. And if not their first trip, maybe their second or third. Uh, they travel independently. And like the other two markets, they look for four and five star hotels with great service and luxury. Um, again, they've got the money to spend. They also like the entertainment at their nightlife. As I mentioned, they don't sit around and play Scrabble. They're the last to bed and the first to rise. Something else to think about when you look at the Brazilian outbound market is the gay and lesbian market. Um, it's a huge market down there, There's a, they, as you know. The, the gay and lesbian market has plenty of money, and they're also traveling internationally. So if you go after this market, you have people that speak Portuguese, you have all the other pieces put together, this is another market to consider. How do the Brazilians look for their travel? All right. Obviously, they're, they're pretty savvy when it comes to the internet. They search online, so a uh, Portuguese website custom made for them is very important. Travel agencies are important, but I'll talk about this in a minute. The number of travel agencies uh, that focus on international travel in Brazil is quite small, which is good for you, so it's easy to reach them. 
Um, tour operators, again, same thing. Limited number, it's easy to reach them. And they have their own form of a USTOA, um, which is an association of operators, easy to work with. And when do they book? Um, up to three months out. So it's a, a longer window than the Russian market, um, and then it's similar to the Chinese. Something else to consider with the Brazilian market, unlike Chinese and uh, Russia, is the mice market. Um, believe it or not, they actually have a lot of Fortune 500 companies down there now that are looking at the meetings market. The incentive market is very strong. So if your destination has a strong at mice program, you might want to consider the Brazilian outbound market for that. Especially if it's a company that does business in Brazil, South America, and the U.S., where the Caribbean is accessible to both, then uh, come meet in the middle. So I think the mice market is something worth exploring at the same time. Um, bottom line is the Caribbean is, is geographically desirable for the Brazilian market. They have the lift, and actually I think if you look at it, it might even be easier to get to parts of the Caribbean from Brazil than parts of the U.S. Um, between Copa and, and some of the other airlines. So again, it's geographically desirable at the same time. So I mentioned that Brazil has 8,500 travel agencies, but um, less than 20% actually sell outbound marketing, outbound travel. So it's important to focus on those agencies at the same time. It's also important to remember that these agencies not only sell outbound travel, but they sell inbound travel at the same time. And next year, World Cup is in Brazil, and two years later, the Olympics are in Brazil. So these agencies, you know, a lot of them are more focused on the inbound market at the same time. So you need to get in front of them, make sure that one, awareness of the Caribbean is there, two, awareness of your destination is there, and three, the product is there. So what can you do as, as a destination? Just to, to sum things up here, and then I've left some time for some, uh, some questions. You know, first and foremost, before you really go after any of these emerging markets, it's up to the CTO to bond together and brand, which uh, Commissioner Doty and, and you have talked about over the last few days, brand the Caribbean for these markets.